This is a Dell 23-inch flat screen monitor, model E2310HC. I acquired several of these recently from the local recycle place. They had been discarded. Took them home. Uh, one of them worked. The others did not. Uh, they, but they're all failing in a similar way, and I decided to go ahead and troubleshoot to see if I could fix any of them. Here is one of the things that the bad monitors were doing. When you plug it in, the power light would come on, but then it would be unresponsive. It would not, none of the buttons would do anything. And this, to me, suggests that we're dealing with a logic problem. It's acting like the thing has sort of lost its mind, which means it's prob the problem is probably on the logic board. If you have a power supply problem, typically either it won't turn on at all, or the power will cycle on and off, or it goes on for a few seconds and, you know, and then the power cuts out, things like that. If you have an inverter problem or a backlight problem, typically the backlights will come on for about two seconds and then it'll shut down, but the buttons will continue to function. Here, the buttons are just doing nothing. So I think there's a logic problem. So we need to take this thing apart and troubleshoot it. Okay, we start by placing the monitor face down and there are four screws that need to come off. One, two, three, four. Those are the only screws that hold the back on. We'll just take those off. Okay, the screws have been removed. You can see there's our model number, E2310HC. Like so many of these monitors, this thing is really stuck together really tightly. I mean, it's, it's basically snapped together, but it's really kind of hard to get apart. We're gonna have to get ourselves a big flathead screwdriver and start just prying away. Now, I have wedged a, a flathead screwdriver you know, between the bezel and the back plate to try to start popping this thing off. I suggest starting along the top and then working down the sides, but be careful to avoid the buttons. Where the buttons are, make that the last place. You don't want to damage that button board. I've got it partially opened here along the top, and we'll just keep going until we get this thing off. When you get the bezel completely pried away from the back, do not pull the bezel away, because that's where your buttons are, and you could end up damaging that cable. Rather, Place the entire monitor face down with everything basically together, loose but together, and then just and then just go ahead and lift the back off, okay? Thus exposing everything on the inside. Uh, this monitor is built with this, unfortunately, super cheap construction methods. It's designed to be as cheap to manufacture as possible. Not necessarily as easy to fix or work on, but it's easy to manufacture. So rather than using screws to hold things together, they use this metalized tape. This is glued down, that's glued down. You're going to have to carefully pull things apart. With these things, you just kind of have to dig your fingernail underneath and slowly peel it back. And unfortunately, it tends to rip and shred and just have to do the best you can. Okay, now I've got this tape peeled back. And so this, this plate, is, this is now partially loose. There are two screws over here, one here and one back here. And those screws have to come loose. And then this entire plate can then be moved. So now our shielding plate is now, the screws are now removed and this whole thing is, is loose. But we still have to remove the, these cables, supply power to the back lights. Those have to be disconnected. And this cable here controls the buttons. So I've gone ahead and I've, I've pulled those loose, that glue carefully not to damage the cable. Getting these uh, cables to the back lights loose is always always tricky. It's always a pain in the neck. There's a little hook on there that basically hooks the thing in. What I do is I'll put my screwdriver behind it to lift up that hook and then just sort of pry backwards. It's easy. It's easier the second time. Again, we'll just do it with the other one. And there we go. So those two are now loose. And that just leaves this guy. This is a little tricky. This is kind of a kind of a friction fit right here. You got to get these little tabs and you have to sort of work it back and forth a little bit. You have to sort of press it in and back back and forth a couple times to get this thing to come loose. Okay, I've continued working on this connector. This is probably the hardest thing is getting that connector to loosen up. And then once that's loose, this guy just pops right out. Fold that back. Now our shield is now loose, and we can now pick the whole thing up and flip it over. 
very typical of, of these monitors. There's basically just two boards. This board is a combination power supply and inverter. And this board is what I call the logic board. Some people call it a main board. Some people call it a driver board. Okay, we have the boards exposed. Because I'm pretty sure problem is on the logic board, I'm simply going to remove this board. I'm just going to leave this board in place. There's one screw holding it in place internally, and then these four screws holding on the video connectors. Okay, these screws have all been removed, and now we can simply lift this board out, and it has two connectors. This connector goes to the power supply. This connector goes you know, the LCD screen. We'll, we'll disconnect those. You have to sort of pinch that and then pull back. Same here. Pinch it here and pull back. Okay, we've disconnected those two cables and now our, our card is now free. And here's our card. This, this uh, card has a part number on it. 715G. 3329-1-2-HF. A very common item for failure are these electrolytic capacitors. The board has three capacitors, one, two, three, which are 100 microfarads and 25 volts. It also has a little one in between there, and that's um, 10 microfarads, 50 volts. Okay, I've got a good capacitor here just for comparison. This is the peak ESR meter. These things are these things are really pretty good. If you're going to be doing serious electronic work, you really need a some sort of an ESR meter. 100 microfarads and about half an ohm of resistance. That's a good capacitor. Okay, here's one of the removed capacitors. Capacitance has been reduced to 91 microfarad, but the ESR is skyrocketed to 9.4 ohms. That's way too high. Here's another bad one. Wow, look at that. 24 ohms. That's incredibly high. Okay, so we have some bad capacitors and they're going to have to be replaced. We're going to go ahead and uh, replace those now. Okay, well, we found that these two capacitors here were bad and those have been replaced. Interestingly, this one was good. It probably has something to do with the proximity to these hot components. Got a couple of big power transistors or a big power resistor there. Probably additional heat on this side, not to mention uh, poor quality capacitors. Okay, now with these capacitors replaced, we're going to go ahead and put it back into the monitor and see what happens. Uh, there are quite a few YouTube videos on how to replace these capacitors. I don't, I'm not going to, you know, repeat their work. One other word about this particular board. Again, the board number is 715G3329-1-2-HF. If you Google that, you'll find that there's a lot of places in China that are, that are selling these things. So if you don't feel comfortable, you know, soldering in your own capacitors, you can probably just buy the entire board. Um, I saw prices ranging anywhere from a high of about $35 to a low of about $9. Throw in some maybe $6 shipping. You, you could probably get one of these for under $15. But if you are able to solder, then you can probably fix your board for just a few pennies worth of capacitors. The uh, bad capacitors replaced. We're going to go ahead and put this back into the monitor. We have to reconnect this cable and this cable. Look at the two cables have been reconnected. Now we're just going to flip that back into place. And we've got to put that screw back in and those four screws holding on the, the video connectors. Okay, the logic board is now back in place. Shield is in place and I've gone ahead and put these screws back in here and behind the cable there. Now you want these, uh, these cables have to be threaded through these these holes here and then reconnected here and here. Okay, the backlight cables have been reconnected. There's still a little stickiness left on this cable, so I've stuck them back down. The last thing is to connect this cable back into that little socket. Okay, the cables it's in but it's loose. You have to push this down in order to snap it in. There we go. It's got it. And we have to try our best to kind of 
fold this tin foil back over again. Like we've got our video cable and our power cord reconnected. I'm going to go ahead and carefully flip this thing over, sort of holding onto this so it doesn't fall, so we can see what we got. Okay, so we're we're flipped over. Let's try that power button. Now it's responding like it should. And aha, we've got a picture. The monitor appears to be fixed. Okay, good. So we didn't have to buy a, a card after all. For a couple pennies worth of capacitors, we have got this thing fixed and up and running. I acquired a total of four of these monitors. Three of them didn't work and one of them did. I went ahead and I replaced these two caps and the other two boards from the other two monitors and they had bad ESR values and replacing them fixed the problem. And that left the one good monitor. And I took the board out of the good monitor and I checked these two caps and sure enough they were also elevated. So they hadn't yet failed but they were probably on their way to failing. I have to wonder why the person discarded the monitor in the first place. Maybe it was failing on them intermittently. Maybe as, maybe as the monitor heated up, maybe it was failing. In all four monitors, these two caps were bad and uh, needed to be replaced. And those capacitors are C704 and C709. Those are 100 uh, microfarad 25 volt caps. And you see they're, they're, they're close to all these other power components. Got that big old resistor there. Got a couple of those big transistors there. That's, that, that heat is probably what's causing them to fail. So, if you've got a problem with the uh, Dell E2310HC monitor, if it's acting goofy like it's lost its mind, it's locking up, the blue light comes on, and everything freezes, this, this is almost certainly a problem. Okay, we have tested it out with the board with the replaced capacitors, and everything's working normally. Now it's okay to snap on the back and put this thing back to use and sort of press them all until it just snaps together easy to put back together hard to take apart and the stand just snaps right in and there we go <clears throat> it's now upright with a stand and hooked up to a video source and let's see what we got oh isn't that beautiful